The following program is for informational and educational purposes only and is not to be considered legal advice. Fraudsters Radio was created to expose the many scams and frauds that have so infected society today. Scammers, fraudsters, and rip-off artists abound, whether it's scamming homeowners with bogus foreclosure relief services, dating fraud, incompetent lawyers, or consumer rip-offs. It's high time the public has a voice. If you work in a profession that deals with fraud, or if you believe you were or are a victim of fraud, you now have a radio listening public that wants to hear from you. Please feel free to message us through our Fraudsters Radio Facebook page, and we may have you on the show as a guest. If you'd like to call in for today's show, the number is 646-668-8512. And welcome to Fraudsters Radio. I'm Lori Z, nationally syndicated radio host and consumer advocate. And is my co-host on the line, Storm Bradford? Uh, I am. Oh, good. We're all together. How are you doing today, Storm? I'm doing good. How about you guys? Well, doing good. You know, it's funny. Every week, you know, the first 15 minutes of the show, we kind of dedicate dedicate to something other than what our big topic is going to be at 115. And, you know, it's funny, Storm, every week, like, either someone gives me some piece of information that looks fraudulent or something happens to me. So I wanted to kind of tell you today a little bit about um, a a friend of mine got a document. I don't have a copy of it, and I didn't write down the name of the company. But apparently uh, this person is in foreclosure and got a document that looked like a government document. I mean, actually looked like a government document. And until you read through it, and then there are some cues, but it's talking about, you know, doing loan modifications when your house is in foreclosure. Uh, and then it goes in and it mentions a little bit about credit repair. So, you know, me, I'm like a detective. I type in the phone number, and it comes up, and it's actually a credit repair company out of Tarpon Springs that somehow um, the guy that owns it is doing loan modifications. I don't know if it's legal or not. But the scary part for me was that the document itself and even the envelope it came in looked like it came from the government. Now, have you ever seen – I'm sure you've seen those, right? Well, actually, the government has cracked down on those, uh, on those companies, and the AGs put them out of business because they try to make themselves look like a government agency, and it's fraud. And, and as yeah. we spoke before, loan modification companies are a scam anyway because you can go to HUD for free – and they'll put right. one of their government people on the phone with you to talk to your bank for free. So why would somebody pay five thousand dollars to get a loan mods beyond me? I don't know, but it, it was. I, I actually had to look at the document and, and read through the whole thing because I'm going, wow, this looks real. But I'm reading through it. And I'm going, mm, something doesn't seem. You know, it's sort of that red flag. Something doesn't seem quite right. But it's only because I've seen so many. I don't think most people have probably seen as many documents. You know, as you or, you or I have. And so that's why I get concerned is when you see a document that looks like it's from the government, is it real or is it not? Um, you know, I, I actually just got documents from the IRS. You're going to laugh. I got documents from the IRS about my taxes, something about a payment that I made last year, and that either I or a third party that I had approved had called the IRS on December 31st, 2008. And so it was like on a Friday when I got the letter. It was too late, you know, to call the IRS. So over the weekend, I'm, I, the next day, Saturday, I get another letter, and it's it's like, oh, you don't owe the you don't owe the IRS anything. Everything is fine. You're all paid up. So <laughs> I'm looking like you know, two days apart. I'm getting these letters. My accountant's going, I have no clue what this is for. We, you know, I should take care of everything. So, but they, she, I actually sent them to her via email to confirm that they were a legitimate IRS documents. Because again, people are are getting uh, either the documents or they're getting the robocalls or the phone calls federal inmates in their names and people they just make it look like that it's the united states government what they would do is, is they put the seal of the united states government on their web page and in real fine print you know uh it, they would say this is not our seal but you need to have a microscope to read it and and they all got put out of business or a good majority of them have been well, people have to really look at it nowadays. Like I said, you know, you and I look at it, but a lot of them really look real. They really look real. 
And so it's hard. And I, you know, I worry. I talk to my mom or my older relatives, and I worry that they're going to be taken advantage of by somebody that's sending a document that looks real and that isn't. Now, while we have enough time, we still have a few minutes, I wanted to tell you about something actually that, that happened to my other half. Uh, and this has happened to me. You know, you'll see companies that offer a trial of a product. And so typically the pitch, it might be on TV or radio or, you know, it might be online. And they'll say, oh, only for only seven ninety five, you know, get a free trial of whatever the product is. And then sometimes it's not even on the same page or it's hidden somewhere, you know, on the website that it's really a trial for a subscription. And so my other half did a trial of some type of uh, natural supplement for seven ninety five, dollars uh, And then uh, two weeks later, it's through, I have my Bank of America card sends me a copy of all transactions. So the first transaction was for seven ninety five. dollars I figured, okay, nothing, he probably ordered something, you know, it's not a big amount of money. Two weeks later, I get a hit online, it's been coming out yet. This wasn't for the trial. This was for, they were going to start shipping, like, you know, every couple of weeks. And then she went down to like, uh, oh, well, we'll refund you 75%. And I was like, uh, no, I'm a consumer advocate and I host a radio show about fraud. And she goes, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll give you the refund of the $102.95 right. and here's the confirmation number. I mean, that's what it's coming down to is that, you know, when you go online and you look at some of these things, I think I told you a long time ago I signed up for stamps.com figuring I, you know, I mail a lot, so maybe, hey, I could mail from, from the house on this little postage meter. But, but I never actually, I don't even think I got the postage meter. I think I just filled in some basic information. But I must have filled in my credit card number because the next thing you know, I'm getting billed $50 a month for stamps.com. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I don't have any device. I've never used the service. No one's ever contacted me to say, hey, so again, thank God for merchant protection. That's why I like credit cards against debit cards. When something goes wrong, you've got a lot better chance of um, getting it taken care of than, you know, if you do pay it with uh, debit, which is cash. Well, you know, there's a lot of those companies that do that. It's it's a trial period, and then they uh, – and then in the, in the small print again – they had this uh they had this stuff that after thirty days, if you don't call us up and tell us that you want uh you know you want to have you don't want the product you got thirty days to let us know, and then uh you don't let them know that's when they hit you right well i I'm not sure what the laws are. I thought that the font had to be a certain size. Uh, same thing like in written contracts for, for refunds and things like that. The font had to be a certain size. So it was easily no, you know, easily noticed on the website. If it's not easily noticed, you know, one of the things I found was I, I actually Googled the name of the company with the word complaint. And then when you see a whole bunch of complaints coming up with the exact same complaint as yours, these companies are doing the same thing. Because I remember years ago, uh, I ordered something online. Again, it was like a free trial product. You know, no obligation, whatever. Uh, and they did the same exact thing, and they, they just started billing you. So the cue is you know, they want your credit card number not just for the free trial shipping. They want your credit card number for the, for the product billing so that each month, you know, you're getting billed. Uh, and until you receive that product, then you don't necessarily know what it is. So I think you have to be really cautious when you're when you're doing anything that's a trial. Because truthfully, at this point, is there? I don't believe that really you can get anything for free. What can you? Well, I mean, that's the old adage. That's the old adage. There's no free right. lunch. Right. You know, so right. you, you got to look everything with uh, a John Desai because if you don't, you know, you're gonna end up getting screwed down the road. Yeah. It's a shame that, you know, for, for, I know for Internet laws, there's a, I think it's a form called IC3, which is the Internet Complaint Center. You can go online and find that if, if you have problems with a company, you know, online over the Internet where it could be considered a crime. But I, I guess, you know, it's like we're trying to be like crime fighters, fraud fighters here to, you know, let all, all the listeners know um, what they can do about particular situations. And, of course, we would like to hear from listeners. If they have any story ideas, we're always open to that, and they can reach us. Uh, through the fraudsters uh, Facebook site, they can reach us that way. Uh, do you have you any know, stories to share with us? Go ahead. No, but you know the uh, 
how they get away with what they get away with is again is the fine print. You know, they uh, the one that you need the microscope to read, and they get right. away with it. They say, Look, it's right on our website that after 30 days we were going to charge your card. But uh, the yeah. print again is so small, and you're reading about the product. And you're saying, oh, okay. Or a lot of them, what they do is they give you a free bottle. Just pay shipping. Right, we'll right. Send you a free bottle of this vitamin to try. And uh, it's only seven ninety five for the shipping. So we'll even yeah. send you two bottles. It's seven ninety nine, uh, seven ninety five for the shipping. And then, but in the fine print, it says that if you don't cancel this within 30 days, it's $150. Right. And, and what I'm finding, yes. What I'm finding too, though, is with certain businesses, you know, if you don't, you have to read the contract because sometimes they won't accept the cancellation notice by phone call. They want a cancellation notice in writing, and so yep. that can make it a little, a little harder too. And you have to be aware of how much time. But it's funny, um, you know, being a credit consultant, I can tell you, I don't think most people even look at their credit card statements. Like I read my statements when they come in to check and see, you know, who is it that I ordered from? Because sometimes you order from a company and it uses a different name. Now, nowadays, a lot of companies, when they send you the receipt, they'll say, by the way, if you paid with a major credit card, you know, the bill will appear under this name, which I think kind of makes it handy dandy. You know what it is. But other times I've looked at things and I'm like, oh, my God, like what name of this particular company was Palomino something. Palomino's a horse, and it was some type of nutritional supplement well, you would never put the two things together. But the funny part was, you know, I'm, I'm pretty aggressive on the phone. The Bank of America person from the fraud department was great. Uh, but when she did that three-way call, and, you know, basically I just beat that lady down and said, uh, no, I looked at your site and, you know, I don't, th- I don't think you want to be on my radio show about consumer advocacy because, you know, what you're doing is, is you know, deceiving people. You know, it's, de- it's a deceptive practice, I think. So I said, that's my opinion. Well, it is. I mean, it's, uh, but, you know, again, they get away with it because they say, look, you didn't read the fine print. Sorry. Yeah. Well, that's why you have a better shot, though, using the credit cards and the debit, because I guarantee you, I don't use debit, but had I, I would not have gotten my money back. But because I did it on the credit card and because, here's the thing, when you have credit cards, your most credit card companies will not just send you your statements online, they'll send you every time you make a purchase, you'll get an email online. So for me, that's kind of handy because when I see something, I, I, get to, I get to know right away, is it something I purchased or my other half purchased or is it something that's a fraudulent purchase? You know, and I like that when they do that. Yeah, well, they're pretty good. Uh, yeah, debit cards, yeah, you may not get your money back. Right. But credit cards, uh, you know, lots of times what happens is is that even if you um, even if you lie to your credit card company, and mm-hmm. let's say, you say, look, I ordered this product and I never got it. Right. If, if you and, and you actually got it. And you lie to your credit card company and say you never got it, they'll give you your money back. Um, they might, but the only thing is if they tracked it, here's how the post office works. If they tracked it and the tracking number shows it was delivered to your mailbox, they may not give you a refund for it. Because I can tell you since I used to do a lot of eBay at one point, um, I've had people where I've shipped to them. And, and, and I'm going to say not all of them were probably scammers. It happened a few times, but I'm going to guess most. And so um, eBay requires that you have a tracking number on merchandise so that they know where it went to. So if it says delivered in mailbox and then the person sends me a message and says, hey, I never got it, well, eBay is going to err to my side because USPS said, hey, we delivered it into their mailbox. After that, it's mail fraud. You know, so the person doesn't get their money back. But I've had that happen a few times. Uh, but let's, see, let's a, lot see of companies, what the, a lot of companies, what they'll do is, you can, you know, let's say you pay for an MP3 or something, you know, some sort of a something online like a video or some sort of uh, something that's sent electronically, uh, right. and you just tell them, look, I, I never got it. And 
you know, they'll they'll get you can lie. They'll lie to their company, to their credit card company, and say I never got it, and you don't have any proof other than the email. And then the only way you're going to get the email to stand up would be to sue them. Right. Because we had uh, we had a uh, a woman who uh, th- this woman she believed in every crackpot theory out there, and. <laughs> She came to us and wanted us to do an exam of a mortgage transaction. And she's okay. telling me all this crazy stuff that, you know, I got $100 million in a treasury account. The bank never lent me money. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and lawyers are part of the British registry and uh, American registry and all this crazy stuff. <clears throat> so I told the lady, I said, look, sorry, you know, can't help you. I said, uh, you know, you believe in fairy tales and, and we just can't help you. So. Yeah. Uh, I said, what you should do is do yourself a favor. Go to our website. Look at all the cases and what the courts have said about this nonsense. And, you know, um, and that will be that. So anyway, calls back a couple of days later, uh, says, oh, I looked at it. She goes, oh, yeah, I see where it's nonsense. Uh, I want to uh, I want you guys to do an exam. And, right. uh, you know, I do the exam for her. We send her her analysis, and she told her credit card company she never got it. Oh, my God, another scammer. It's, it's and, so disappointing. And, I'm, oh, so disappointing. And, to, and in doing the analysis, we found out, like, the woman filed bankruptcy, like, five times in one year. Oh, geez. So, she was yeah, scamming you really bankruptcy scam court. Her. She was scamming Crazy. everybody. And she scammed us because her, her <clears throat> we use PayPal as a merchant servicer, and uh, th- th- you know they're telling you know I sent look here's what we sent this is what we did you know here's the emails between her and and, and so forth and so on, and then next thing I get uh, I get something from PayPal and they said well you know we had to give her her money back. Yeah, I'm sorry you hear that. We're gonna, so I'm gonna have to I was, come, yeah, but, but, I was uh, curious to PayPal, and the next thing I get, a couple of days after that, I get this collection company calling me saying, oh, you owe PayPal $5,000. Oh, my God. And I'm sure you beat them, right? Oh, oh I, it just happened. Oh, this just happened? That's yeah, and then PayPal, then PayPal says to me that we're not going to allow you to use PayPal anymore because um, – you, uh, uh, you know, you go sold something. Her. Well, we got to go to a commercial break, but you should go after the actual credit card company or bank account. Don't know who it is. That. PayPal, PayPal, PayPal wouldn't tell us who it is. That's bizarre. All right, well, so the only way to get her money back, the only way to get her money back is to sue the woman. And now yeah. PayPal is telling me we, we're no longer allowing you to use PayPal because, uh, Somebody pays uh, you money and you didn't deliver it. Maybe you should file that internet internet crime document, that IC3 yeah. form. You know, but let's do this. I apologize. Let's go to commercial because I know we probably have our guests waiting yeah. on the line. Yep, and when we come back, we're going to be speaking. If you remember Tammy Sorrento from Fireball Proofs, uh, we're going to be talking about contractor scams because we didn't get to cover that last time. So stay with us and we'll be right back. <laughs> Have you received a notice of foreclosure on your property? Do you suspect that you're involved in an unfair or fraudulent loan agreement? Are you looking for a way to save your energies that the so-called gurus aren't aware of? If you answered yes to any of those questions, a professional team at Mortgage Fraud Examiners can assist you and your attorney with all of these things and more. Contract breaches, errors, statutory, regulatory violations, fraudulent appraisals, and other fraudulent conduct cause most mortgages to be legally problematic. In fact, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation founded nearly 2,000 financial institutions for significant compliance violations. They also examined appraisals and found out that of the 259 appraisals reviewed for accuracy, only seven fully complied with professional standards. Call us at 844-920-7200. That's 844-920-7200. Mortgage Fraud Examiners, 844-920-7200. 
Okay, we're back on Frost's radio show, and it's AM FM 24-7 radio. And we today have our special guest who's been with us before. She's excellent. Her name is Tammy Sorrento. Tammy, you're with us. I sure am. Hey, Tammy, I understand you're going to uh, tell us about contractor scams and educate us on that. Absolutely. The major tip that I want to give today to all the listeners is when you hire a contractor, it can be a contractor that comes to work on your home. It can be, let's say, you're moving and you hire a moving company. Any time that you're hiring a company, request a certificate of insurance in your name. So if someone, let's say you're getting your roof repaired, and and I always beat up on roofers because that is such a hazardous type of work. So if someone gets injured on your property and they don't have the adequate insurance, guess who's going to get sued? Yes. Saying yes. Well, are you, are you saying, Tammy, that when, like, if I hire a contractor to work on my roof, they go through their own yes. insurance company to get a certificate of insurance made out in my name so that if anything goes wrong, then I don't have any responsibility? Well, here's how certificates of insurance work. Um, okay. When you buy, when you purchase an insurance policy, let's say you are the roofing company, you purchase an insurance co- uh, policy, you're paying for two months. Your down payment is for two months of coverage. So during that time, you have a copy of your insurance card, and most people accept just that. They just figure if they see that there's insurance, they're good to go. That is not correct because what if a subsequent payment was not made? So you could be looking at a... Exactly. So you're going to have no recourse if there's no insurance. But here's how the certificate of insurance works. Is you would contact, you would look at whatever they give you, contact the insurance company and say that you want a certificate of insurance in your name. So what happens is the insurance company then will notify you directly if anything happens with that insurance policy. Gotcha. So you don't, <clears throat> yes. So that that is a protection that most people don't know about. So if the certificate is in your name, then you have recourse. If you hire now, a moving company and they come and pick up your stuff and they show you that they have insurance, but you don't have it and you don't have the certificate in your name, you don't know if that insurance is in force or if it has lapsed. Well, Tibby, what happens if a company, like I I have a friend that owns a moving company. Um, She's Mm -hmm. self-insured. So she, in other words, they, they, I guess they're self-insured, so what they guarantee in their contract is if they break anything, they will be liable to replace or repair it. Right. I, but I, but it's a smaller. I don't think it's, I don't think she's a huge company. It's not a huge. It's not a huge moving company. It's like a you know Florida, right. like the state of Florida moving company. Um, but right. I think that's a good idea. And I know, I did not know that. I remember once buying a house. I asked the contractor for the certificate of insurance, and they said I had to call the insurance company. And when I called the insurance company, they said, Oh well, we can't give you that information. Any information about our vendor, you know, our contractor. And I thought, Huh. So is it better to to go through the contractor to request that certificate of insurance in their name? Because nowadays, you know, there's so many fraudsters, they could just print something off, of, off their own printer. Exactly. So in that case, and that's a perfect scenario, in that case, tell the contractor that you need a certificate of insurance in your name, and they request it, but still always follow up with the insurance company, say, hey, I've got this certificate of insurance, just want to make sure that all the information is correct on this. And then go through the um, policy enforcement date, the uh, policy end date, make sure the coverages are correct. 
because just like you said, unfortunately, you have to do your due diligence. Right. I got it. So, you know, let's talk maybe a little bit about, I mean, that that's a, an awesome tip. I think that's probably the most important tip I've ever heard in relation to contractor scams. You know, I, I years ago I had, um, I'm from New Jersey, and I had a house where we put an addition on it. Fortunately, it was someone that I knew and was reputable right. and did everything the right. I, I was lucky, did it the right way. Now I'm down here in Florida, yeah. as, as you are, and you know how it is down here. I mean, if the storm yeah. blows through and there's minor, da- you know, there's damage, not necessarily minor, in one specific area, it's like all the contractors in the state, they, they jump in their cars and they head to those areas because they want to be where yeah. all, you know, the money is going to be. But, you know, how do you know? I mean, a lot of times they might not be a licensed contractor, even if they show you a license that could be forged. But I do know online, I think it's through uh, the DBPR, Department of Business and Professional Regulation. I think doesn't that have to show whether the, the contractor is licensed or not? Yes, under SunBiz. That's also where you can look them up. You can look them up on sunbiz.org. You can look up their name. If you have more information, you can do an even better search. But absolutely, make sure. And my tip of the certificate of insurance is then you have another recourse because then you have someone else on the line, and that will be the carrier because they are required to contact you if anything happens with that policy. So I mentioned that because I have been reading about moving company scams. And what they do is they pick up your stuff, and we may have talked about this last time, and forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but what they're doing, and it just blows my mind, but they pick up your stuff. You've you've entered into an agreement. They'll move your stuff, stuff for X amount of money. Then when you get to your location, they will hijack your stuff and say you owe more money. Now, if you had a certificate of insurance, you are considered an additional insured, then you have the insurance company to go to. Okay. So it's just one more level of security, in my opinion. Yeah, well, it's, it's it's everything down here, I think, in Florida is, is pretty bad. But let's talk more about contractor scams. We're going to go to a commercial break. We come back. Let's okay. Play. I've got a whole list. i got a whole list I could throw at you, so stay with us, and we'll be back in a moment. You got it. Stay. There is a very high likelihood your mortgage contains an extensive error. At Mortgage Fraud Examiners, we know just how costly a missed opportunity can be. For almost 40 years, we have consulted, retained, and referred to by attorneys, lawyers, trial practitioners throughout the nation. Put another way, we are the trusted source for litigation support. A foreclosure is basically an allegation the homeowner breached the contract by failing to make timely payments. The contract is clear. The borrower promised they would make timely payments, and if they didn't, the lender could take the property. The only way to overcome the homeowner's breach is to show the lender breached first. Identify errors that would void the contract. Identify regulatory violations. Identify appraisal fraud and other fraudulent contact. And the only way to find these wrongs is to thoroughly examine the whole mortgage transaction. This meticulous examination of your mortgage transaction and appraisal can identify legal defects that would make your mortgage unenforceable and entitle you to compensation or even free title to your property. Call us at 844-920-7200, Mortgage Fraud Examiners. That's 844-920-7200, 844-920-7200. Okay, we're back on Fraudsters Radio at AM FM 24-7 with our special guest, Tammy Sorrento, and we're discussing contractor scams. Uh, Tammy, that was interesting, very interesting, and I would surmise that if you were to bring that up to the uh, uh, to the contractor and they said, well, we don't do that, you'd be wise to go in another direction. That is a red flag, absolutely. Yeah. So what what about um, Angie's list? I mean, is Angie's list any Angie's good? List. They, yeah. It's, 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 it's no different. 
So basically what you are using when you use Angie's List are reviews. And if you look at the fine print, it says we did not confirm insurance. Okay. So you you have to do it on your own. So when it comes to, you know, contractors, um, how do you determine if I'm going to hire somebody to fix something on my house? How do yes. I know how much? Let's assume that I th- I find out they are legitimate. Is how do I know how much right. to pay them? I mean, I, is it a certain percentage of the job? Is it just enough to get materials for the job? And if it's you know if it's a longer job, how do you? Everything I'm assuming has to be in writing, right? Every step should be yes. in writing because you want to protect yourself. But Absolutely. how do you decide how much money? Like if they say, well, we need 15 percent down to paint your house, is that a fair amount or not at all? you know, initially? I think all contractors are different in that respect. So in that case, as far as, you know, what's acceptable, that's kind of up to the contractor. Okay. Because I would be nervous. Like some of the contractors where where I live, I'm in Landa Lakes, Florida, they do not accept credit cards. No credit cards. They will only accept cash or uh, a check or a debit card. To me personally, that is a warning. That's a warning. Yeah, what is the reasoning for that? Uh, I'm thinking take the money and run. Um, I think the reasoning right. for it is that, is that when using a credit card, there's a certain percentage, you know, I don't know what it is, 3 or 4% maybe, that they have to pay back to the company for, you know, allowing someone to use their credit card. Now, I know I've done right. shows on this before with credit cards. It's actually illegal to charge more money for a job. Uh, and if you're using a credit card, you're not supposed to charge, like MasterCard or Visa, for example, you're not allowed to charge more than you would a cash price. But a lot of companies exactly. will do that. They'll say, hey, you know, if you're going to use a credit card, it's going to cost us 3.5% more, so we're going to charge you 3.5% more. Now, if MasterCard or Visa find Ooh. out about that, you know, that, that could be a problem for that particular, that particular client. But, you know, I don't know. This is a scary state, like I said, and, you know, people can right. knock on your doors or they leave, they leave those little things in your door saying, hey, your lawn looks really crappy, hire us. And so when I first moved <laughs> or, here, I, or we I hired were in a, your neighborhood. Yeah, we were in your neighborhood. And, you know, I had one of those companies when I first moved in here, and they did such a crappy job on my lawn. It was, I, it was right. so embarrassing. And the poor guy that came to work on my lawn, he was actually honest, and he told me up front, the company sucks. He goes, but just I'll be coming. I'll take care of you from now on. And he was with the company probably for a few months, and I guess he got fed up and he quit. And so, you know, then they oh, went wow. back to doing whatever it was that they were doing that wasn't working, and my lawn was, like, getting worse and worse with fungus. And then I finally canceled it, and you're ready. So I look online because nothing they gave me, no paperwork, had their address on it. Um, and so I'm looking up on Google to find their, the only address I could find for this company, and I mailed them a certified return receipt letter. They're in the same town I'm in, and it bounces back, but they're right. not at that address. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. So that that sounds like a fly-by-night company. Oh no, they're still in business, and I think some of my neighbors may still may still use them because they also do pest control and they do uh, lawn control. And I just had to laugh when the letter came back, you know, because they didn't give any companies nowadays. They don't like to put their physical addresses, or they don't like to put their phone number. They want to make you find them, however it is. You know, some companies just want you to call. Yeah. Some companies just want you to email. So it becomes tricky, right. and you're right. And you can go into SunBiz. The only problem is if it's a subsidiary of a company that, or, you know, they may not have the actual yeah. name. And then, then you have to try to be a detective and find out, well, if you know the name of the person who owns it, you might be able to track it down that way. But right. there's a lot of crappy, you know, contractors here. Yeah, you're not kidding, and that's why – Once again, you have to do your due diligence. So I'm glad you brought up the Angie's List because that is a common misconception that if you hire someone off Angie's List that you're good to go. No, you still need to do 
your own steps to make sure that that company is going to be okay to come onto your property where you can experience liability if something bad happens. Got it. All right, Storm, you have some questions? Yep. No, but I do have something here. I hear it. I hear a clicking. Okay. I hear yes, clicking. Hear it it's, like a, it's like a skip record. I don't know yep. if it's Tammy's phone or what, but uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, from the station, they had to call us from a different number. There was something wrong with the other number, so I think that's what the problem is. I don't think it's any of us. Okay, because okay, it's cause like I a, don't hear it. Yeah, it's like oh, a okay. record well, skipping. Yeah, I think it's on on the the radio end. I think there's a problem, but hopefully it'll try to fix that. So it's it's mild. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go on. I got more questions here. Um, you know, can you hear us? Okay. I sure can. Okay, good. What about contractors that say I don't need to pull a permit? I mean, if, and especially for women who own houses, maybe single women, and they might say I right. don't need to pull a permit. I sit here and I go, well, if I want to cut the tree out, do I need, you know, my front yard that's pulling up my driveway, do I need a permit? You know, and people tend to go by what the contractor says. Now, first off, if I were going to get a contractor to come to my house, I would probably not just call one. I would probably call three because I like that rule of three and see what they're going to each say and compare apples to oranges because it's not always apples to apples. But when they say they don't need to pull a permit, who, who do you call? You call the, the county? Do you call the town? How do you find out if you actually need a permit for what that contractor is doing? I know in my experience that information is usually on the property appraiser's website. Okay. That's where I go so that, for that information. So that for might the be a, a source. For the county that you're in or where the work is going to be done, check the property appraiser website. And you may even have to do a search for permits, but that's what I do. That's what I look at. Right. And, and the other thing, too, I'm in an HOA, so anytime anyone does uh, uh, big jobs on their house, they're usually going to have to pay additional money to the HOA on top of having the permit, right. you know, having the contractor have the permit. Um, right. Now, another thing I, I know, I know is because I know people who have put additions on their home. I was lucky I knew the person who did mine years ago. But when they go yeah. along, you know, and they give, they give you a contract, now, of course it's possible unforeseen circumstances can, can happen. You know, they might right. open up a wall and, you know, it could be termite stuff you didn't see and all that. How do you right. gauge that? Should there be something in the contract that says, you know, if we find – because how can you list everything that could possibly happen? How do you um, come to a fair way of resolving that? Because you don't really know what's going to happen, but you don't want to get ripped off. By the same token, the contractor does get deserves to get paid for what really does have to be done. Well, if, in that case, it would be just like getting your vehicle repaired. They have to uh, get your approval before they move forward if the unforeseen stuff and it, there's always something unforeseen that comes up. Right. So, yeah, you definitely don't want to sign a contract that gives the contractor um, the right to do whatever without your authorization. Okay. Because one of the articles I read said if, you, if you're not sure about what a, if a contractor is telling you the truth about structural problems, uh, you can get an impartial opinion from a home inspector, uh, the local branch yes. of the National Association of Home Builders, or your local building department. Now, I don't know if they charge, but it's, in this kind of case, it's probably worth having a second opinion, right, of someone coming out and saying, oh, yeah, that's a reasonable I, amount. Yeah, you may have to pay a little over $100 to have that done, but imagine the protection on the back end. Okay. All right. Because like and you said, you're going to have to pay the appraiser to look at it to make sure that that contractor is headed in the right direction. You know, it's a lot of work to hire people nowadays. I, I have it to is. say. It really it, is. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a contractor, whether it's, you know, a realtor, a bank, whatever it is. You, you, nowadays, you just don't know what you're getting. 
and it's almost like you have to you have to be you know I know you're a, a for, uh, you know, a private investigator, detective. It's almost like consumers have to think as if they're own, they're their own detective. They're their own lawyer. They're their own doctor. Yeah. Like you have to actually research and have your list of questions, um, you know, for yourself at least, and go through everything and try to find out is this company legitimate? Are they not? You know, it's when you right. mention like ratings, like Angie's List. Now, whether or not they're verified, I don't know. But, you know, I, I, I remember years ago someone saying, hey, people can just go ahead and, you know, a company can call up all their family and friends and say, write us a positive rating. And they can get 100 right. positive ratings. So unless you know exactly. it's a verified purchase, you, you, how do you really know if the, if the company's legit? Right. You, you can't nowadays. You really can't. As a matter of fact, I was looking at apps, um, like the RFID detector apps that you can download off of Apple iTunes or Google Play. And okay. there was a couple apps that had a lot of reviews. And, of course, that's the first thing you look at, uh, right. human behavior, is how many reviews are there. And then when you started reading the reviews, they all had the same um, misgrammar, like yeah. uh, the spelling, the Linguistic. certain things that just weren't quite right. Yeah, and it was like they all had that. So I'm guessing that really those thousand plus reviews could have been just one or the actual yeah. owner, the developer. It is scary. So you do have to do your homework for sure. I actually, you'll laugh, I actually saw this on a realtor's website. And every, every rating was exactly three sentences long. And not that it was right. identical, but you could tell that whoever did it, it was not a different person. It was the same person right. writing the same three things three different ways. It was, it, was, it was uncanny. And I looked at that and I went, yeah. I, I can't even imagine that because, like, people who write me ratings or testimonials, they're, they're real people. You know, they're real people. Right, exactly. But to think about people doing it for, <laughs> doing it for their own companies yeah. and then they, those are probably the same people that are writing the bad ones for their competitors. Exactly. Um, let me tell you something that I discovered last week, and I posted this on my Facebook page, Fireball Approves. I just mm -hmm. happened to be on the Bay County Property Appraiser, so that's your panhandle area. And on the okay. Property Appraiser site, it said, Scam Alert. An outfit called Record Transfer Services is sending a solicitation through the mail offering to provide property owners a copy of their deed for $95. And then it has huh. an example of that. And what's funny about that, this is a scam because you can just order that for free. But people don't know that. They don't always know that. Exactly. Who would know that? Right. And, and, and I noticed that I a lot of... Go ahead. Go ahead. And I noticed that when I started my business, all of the business licenses um, correspondence that I was receiving in the mail, it would say, you need this, you need that, you know, pay us over $100, we'll get this for you. And then if you, you really have to take the time to read the documentation, because in the small print it said we are not associated with the state of Florida, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I got all that some of those correspondence. Too. Ended, yeah, so it just ended up in the trash. But but I always think to myself, imagine the new business owners that look at that and go, "Oh my God, I got to order that," when they really right. don't have to. Yeah, it's funny you mention that because before you before we had you on, Storm and I were talking about how I had a friend who in foreclosure got a document that looked like it was an actual government document, the way the envelope was done, the way the letter was done. Oh, yeah. I, I remember, re yeah, I'm reading through it, and it's from a credit re repair company in Tarpon Springs, Florida, that is also doing loan modifications. And I, don't, I can't remember if they were charging. All I remember was the, the letter looked so real that, you know, if you get mm -hmm. someone who's not knowledgeable or you get a senior citizen, um, you know, maybe someone who's not as sharp, they're going to think it really is like a government letter. Exactly. Exactly. So my first cue is 
oftentimes these come from California. So I'll look to see where it was mailed from. And then I look deeper into the correspondence, and then sure enough it will say, because they have to put on there that they're not, but the key is that they're not affiliated with the state. But the key is that you have to look for it. I think that's a good tip. Now, we're going to go to, yeah, let's do our last commercial break now. We come back. we still got a few more things to go through. All right, so everyone stay okay. with us back in a moment. Consumers, do you have bad credit, can't purchase a house or car, paying too much in interest on your credit cards and loans, scammed by credit repair companies? There is hope. You can get back on track and do it the right way. Call Credit Education Consultants today at 813-500-6064. That's 813-500-6064. Or go to CreditEducationConsultants.com now and get the help you need. Don't delay. Call today. Mortgage reps and realtor inquiries are also welcomed. Okay, we're back on Fraudsters Radio, AM, FM, 24-7 with our special guest, Tammy Sorrento, and she's educating us on contractor fraud. You have some more questions, Laurie? Oh, I always have que- questions. I have a million questions. I'm going to try and look through <laughs> these real quick. Uh, and we're going to go through okay. this so fast, Tammy. All right. Uh, one of them is, you know, and I don't know if you've ever seen this. I've seen it happen up here where I live. Someone will drive by, you know, like maybe they've done the neighbors uh, with, pay, you know, pavers, and uh, they'll, they'll still have a ton of stuff, and they come by and they'll go, hey, we got all the stuff we could do your driveway really cheap. You know, right. I, those types of things make me suspicious because, you know, it, it's like an impulse purchase right then, and people are not prone oh, it is. to really looking. Yeah, they're not looking at it. So I, I myself would, would pass on something like that. Um, I would too. Yep, the the licensing you mentioned that was very important. You got to make sure they're licensed. Uh, people who offer you really low bids. Okay, so that's where oh, yeah. I think you know that rule of three comes in handy is get yeah. three contractors. And I would never tell any of those contractors who the other ones were because it may, you know they can exactly. be friends. Who knows, right? You you want three right, independent right. type um, bids on that. And then if they're requiring a large deposit. That would make me personally nervous, um, especially, right. like we said, on their receipts. If they don't have a, a place of, an established place of business, that makes me suspicious when it's not on the receipt. Like a receipt, if I give somebody a receipt, you know, it'll, it'll have all the information on it. But a lot of these contractors are fly by night, and so what happens is um, they can just close up shop, right? They can mm-hmm. declare bankruptcy if they need to, or they probably don't even do that. And then they just can reopen right. the next day under another name, right? Exactly. Yes, they do do that. I know Texas is really bad about that. Um, so once again, the same thing, same principle. Um, always make sure, and like you said, the, the time, the fact that they're right there and they can do it really cheap is definitely a red flag. Yeah, no one does and anything really I would anymore. Pass that up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me, um, me in fact, too. We, got, we received one of those postcards, and we actually need to have some trees removed in our yard. And I contacted the company and I said, Hey, I'm the owner of Fireball Approves, and I'm going to need a certificate of insurance and my name. And, you know, they never contacted me back. So, yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yep, I've done I figured that before. I had dodged like, a bullet there. Yeah, I, I did that once uh, on one and a half if I have the Lanai screen. And, you know, I, I'll say, are you insured? And if they say no, I'll say, I'm sorry, I can't use you. And then they'll come back with the right. lower price, and I go, it has nothing to do with the price. It has to do with if something goes exactly. wrong. You know, I could get sued by you or your employees could sue me, and I'm not going to do right. that without having some type of insurance. But if they don't have... Um, a permanent place of business, you know, and I laugh. I always laugh when I tell people I read Craigslist ads for entertainment value. But you will actually see right. people posting scam artists in Craigslist. You know, if you if, <gasps> so you'll really? see, yeah, from time to time, like you'll you'll read like somebody will use someone, and they'll, that's how I know they close yeah. out their name, and the next day they open because you see if you look on Craigslist, they actually people post that kind of stuff so as a warning so that other people can kind of see it. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, but and then, then you know, yeah. going to really look for that. But that is good to know. 
Now, the other thing, too, is if they don't want to give you a contract and they want to just do verbal, I would also go running, and I'm sure Storm would agree to that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, Storm, what would you say to someone who said no contract? They don't want to sign a contract. Yeah, in other words, if if, a contractor says, hey, we don't do contracts. (laughs) And we don't do business. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, that's true. But there are people who will do it. There are people who will fall for it. Yes. There are seniors that will fall for it. They'll say, oh, well, we have a senior special and it's 50% off, but no, yeah. I can't give you a contract. And then they hand over the money. I know. It blows my mind. It really does. Now, let me ask you, what do you think about uh, getting references? You know, like the old days before you hire someone, you say, hey, I want to get a few references. Is it worth doing that, or are they just going to give you, like, three people that they are, you know, already know kind of thing? Or, or you know, you know, if um, me, I'm thinking out loud, maybe I would say give, give me three references where you're actually doing jobs now because a lot of times they put the sign out in the front yard. That's a good idea. Always check a Better Business Bureau. Um, check and see if they have a Facebook page because most, Companies nowadays do have Facebook pages and see what those type of reviews look like. Okay. And then you get the people that offer you special deals. You know, they offer you the special deal if you sign right now. And, you know, I'm going to tell you guys a quick story because this goes back to when I was married. So this is probably 12, 12, 13 years ago. I lived in a house with a pool and it was a high-pressure salesman, and his associate came in and wanted to sell us a um, solar panel water heater type thing for the pool. And right. It, I mean, it sounded really good, but there was a three-day right of rescission, and I don't remember what happened, but I remember we decided to kill that deal, and they were really upset. Like, it was difficult to get the money back um, from that, but I can't remember why we decided – to to do it, but I do remember they were really high pressure. Like when they come to your door, uh, and they're not allowed to do that in a lot of HOAs. They do it anyway, Uh, and it's it's one high-tactic pressure salesman. And, uh, you know, especially, I hate to say it, it, I think it's more towards women that they gear it than men, you know, because women just are not, they don't, most women don't know as much about houses, I think more men know more about it. So then they come in and they do the high pressure thing. Well, first off, I don't want strangers in my house, so I'm not going to, you know, do that, not unless my other half of my dog are home. Um, But that that to me would be a warning sign, high high pressure tactics, right? Just just kick them out the door, kick them to the curb. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? We're we're not in a um, day and age where they're the only game going. Um, they have competition, so if they cannot um, deal with you on your timetable, then move on. Okay. And then as far as how you pay them, like cash is probably not best, so that's sort of a warning if they want cash. Um, but you should, I know you should get a receipt for every time they make it. See, I'm a good record keeper, so every time I Me do too. something I want to have, I, yeah, I want to have a document. If I write a check and they cash it, I want to I want to print it up and you know keep a file, even if it's inside my computer on that. That way, if I have a problem down the road, I don't have to go hunting for those papers. Now, Storm, I actually have a yeah. I got a question for Storm maybe to answer for us on this last one. See you there, Storm. Okay. I'm here. Okay, mechanics liens. So if the contractor claims that he's unpaid. Um, what is the normal process in most states? Because I know they can put a lien against the property. Do they have to go to court? Do they have to sue you? Um, you know, I can think of plenty of people. Like I know someone down here in Florida who, who hired a roofer to do a job, gave him some money, the roofer never completed the job, and then the roofer put a, a, a mechanics lien against this property. What, how, how does that all work? So, so our listeners kind of have an idea of what they need to know. Well, um there there's forms that they can fill out uh they can they can put it uh they can you know go to the land records um there's a lot of places like um 
I don't know if, uh, but some of these legal places like uh, uh, Legal Zoom and things like that, right? They, they have these templates uh, that they can go and fill out these forms, and then they can take those forms and then uh, go, uh, uh, you know, go to land records and put it in land records to make sure that. If anybody tries to get that uh, get that property, uh, you know you're in line to get paid. So, but do they? Uh, but what I'm saying is, do they have to actually file a court case where a judgment has to be won to place that mechanics lien, or all they have no. to do is say they could just say whatever the heck they want and then go in and do it? Well, you know, I know I, I know different states. Uh, have different ways of doing things, um, but uh, you know it, it's it, it's just uh, it depends on the state that you're in. But uh, usually, uh, what you can do is 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 again, if uh, you could call up land records in your state and say, "Look, let me ask you a question. If you know I, I'm having a dispute with somebody who did some work in my, on my house." And they threatened to uh, put a uh, uh, a mechanics lien uh, on my property. How did they do it here in my state? Interesting. Here, I think that's, I yeah, that's the best yeah, I way think, to get the answer. Yeah, in Florida, I don't think they they take you to court. I think they can just go ahead and do it. But if you have a dishonest contractor. You know, that might be do, something that they're doing frequently. So that makes me think, well, I would probably go to court records, you know, in my county and neighboring counties and put in the owner contractor's name to see if he's suing a lot of people for non-payment. Because that, to me, would be a red flag. But I don't think most people would think to do that. But I think it would be a good idea. Oh, yeah. absolutely. The more information, the better. But well, I think what you, they, you gave us a touch. Go ahead. You know, what they have to do, guys, is they have to uh, uh, they have to send you a notice. You have to make sure that you got it. Uh, so, and then what they will do is is they prepare the document, and then they've got to uh, basically deliver that to the property owner. You have time to then say, hey. Excuse me, you know you're wrong, but uh, but then what they'll do is is then they have to go to the recorder's office and they record it, and then that's in land records, and that's how it works in most states. Yeah, and then I'm thinking then you as the the homeowner probably has to take them to court at that point to to fight them, correct? Yeah, I, I mean usually what you the smart thing to do is to ask these guys, say, look, you know, uh, let's try to work this thing out because they've got to tell you that they're going to do the mechanics. I mean, they've got to send it to you in writing in most states, and then you just basically try to work something out. If you can't, then they're going to file a mechanics lien, and then you're going to have to, uh, you know, try to do something from a legal standpoint to have them removed. Right. Well, a lot of stuff will... We're at, we're out of time, Tammy. Why don't you give out uh, your contact information in case anybody wants to get a hold of you? Okay, you can send me an email at info at fireballapproves dot com. If you have any questions, if I don't know the answer, I'll certainly get it to someone that will know the answer. Um, and my website is fireballapproves dot com. And we're adding services right now. We check out rental ads to make sure you're dealing with the owner and not a scammer. And we're also developing some products for property owners that are renting their properties out. So uh, always check back to see what we're offering. But that's fireballapproves.com. Great. Thanks very much, Tammy. Any last uh, remarks, Storm, before we close out? No. Uh, Tammy, no, you're wonderful. Name. You were wonderful as, all, as always, and uh, yeah, we'll have you back on again. But uh, yeah, great show. Uh, I'm sure our listeners learned a lot. Uh, I learned a lot, and uh, you know, thanks again. You betcha. Thank you for having me. All right. Okay, guys. Well, Enjoy your week. Yep. 
Thanks, and thanks for joining us today on Foster's Radio. You can join us again next Monday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time Live. Remember, we do want to hear your stories, and you can contact us through the Fraudsters Radio Facebook page. Have a great day, guys.